Greetings and welcome. This is an exciting day for me. Um, it's just going to be a, a short video and the reason I'm doing this is because I was contacted out of the blue by someone a couple of weeks ago who had come across my channel through a friend and uh, he himself is an amateur geologist with an extensive knowledge and an amazing collection of, of stones. And he took an interest in these stones and, and the, the work that I've done and uh, was fascinated because he hasn't come across stones like this in his, uh, in his geological journeys. And uh, a friend of his is the owner of uh, an extensive laboratory. And this man is uh, an expert not only in geology but also in the forensic analysis of antiquities when it comes to dating and authentication. And this is the kind of guy that billionaires turn to when they're going to buy something that costs, you know, half a billion dollars and they want to make sure that they're getting what they're paying for. Um, so anyway, I, I had a number of specimens. He, they asked me to send some of the best, but I'm, I was hesitant to, um, to let go of some of the ones that I have because I'm waiting for laboratory analysis. And today's also an exciting day because I actually uh, have finally found a laboratory that allow me to do a CAT scan analysis of some of the best specimens that I have. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to be able to do that at the end of the week. And then, of course, I'll make a video about the, the results and see if um, there's any any wonderful things revealed by the CAT scan, which will give me a, a 3D X-ray of the internal structure and density of the rocks. But when it comes to other laboratory analysis, like things like uh, spectroscopy, also known as X-ray fluorescence, that gives you the molecular breakdown of uh, what's what's in the stone. So if there's a correlation between between that. Um, you know, what they find with the XRF and uh, what would normally be found in a fleshy heart that's not petrified, then um, that would be a, an awesome uh, thing to add to the list of, of coincidences. So we'll see how that all works out. Um, I'll be sending these off. I, I went out into the field uh, for a couple of hours and pulled almost all of these except for a couple out um, in just uh, about 90 minutes of searching um, and uh, You can't really tell here, but these are really special and they come to life when when they are put into water so we, Anyone who's seen seen the videos that I presented already knows that I, I talk a lot about this harp shape There's a fleshy quality and usually there's, you can see this one's been wet on the back side. Um, and we'll just dip it in here. <clears throat> and you can see how this just comes to life when it's in water. So the heart is uh, surrounded in a fatty sac called the pericardium. So a lot of these are, are white. Uh, and then when little bits are rubbed away, it reveals the red that's on the inside talked a lot about the the different features when it comes to the shapes and that when the heart goes into rigor mortis upon death that the heart is a muscle so it contracts like all the muscles do and the ventricles taper inward on the sides the bottom side tends to either be flat or curved inward There will be a, a spiral at the bottom because of the, the toroidal spiral nature of the way the heart fibers contract, which uh, I've talked about in several videos. There will also be at the top of the rocks, there will be usually either indentations, creases, or actual holes where the aorta and the vena cava would have been. And then on the sides, there will oftentimes be the same thing for the pulmonary arteries. So this one you can see it's it's white on the outside, but where it gets wet, it really starts to reveal the the flesh, the fleshy quality of the of the stone. So it's going to be really interesting to to see. This one has a little chunk taken out on the sides, and uh, that's that's good because uh, what I wasn't aware of until I spoke to the man who owns the laboratory was that um, he prefers that I that I deliver him rocks that have already been fractured. So um, I'll be sending most of these along just for his own uh, collection and the other gentleman who put me in touch with him. 
um, and then maybe he'll he'll actually crack some of these open as well the 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 ones that are whole and you can see again there's your crease and your your um, your blood vessel openings that telltale harp shape the curving in on the sides the flattened bottom this one is the same thing you can see here got the opening at the top and there as well and then you've got that that curved beautiful underside oftentimes one side will be a little bit thicker and then the other side will be almost like a knife edge this one is amazing look at this one look at how fleshy that is and then it's got the blood vessels right there at the top what are the odds what a coincidence and that curved underside and then this is also showing the sulcus lines for the intraventricular sulcuses which is where the fibers of the heart meet as it rolls up the heart is not a four chamber pump it's a it's a single continuous band that's known as the myocardial ventricular band that was discovered by the the uh, Spanish cardiologist Francisco Torrent Guasp, also known as Paco, I've done uh, several videos on his work. Amazing man that's uh, given us so much uh, as far as our, our understanding about the heart goes. So here you can see that knife edge that I was talking about. And there's that shape again. So it's going to be interesting to see what these yield. This one is amazing because it's still showing the blood vessels and also your aorta right at the top so flattened top harp shape now they're not always like this sometimes they're round like an elephant's heart is more of a round blob and a and a giraffe's heart is long and narrow and uh and and so depending on what species you're looking at and whether it's a three chamber or a four chamber heart you're going to get different results this one is extremely fleshy and you can see that that twist at the bottom and the curved underside um, and there, there's a scalability to it all, all these little tiny ones. See a little indentation there, right where it should be. People say I'm cherry picking these, but I've gone out in the field and in a matter of 10, 15 minutes, found a dozen. Hey, look at that little indentation. And uh, the thing that makes some of these so nice is that they, they I, I theorize that they're, once once a heart has been petrified or other organs as well i'll show you some other examples in a second of other organs once that's happened um it stays a rock so if there's another cataclysm another reset i think that what happens is the the fleshy quality somebody's beeping on my door they can wait the fleshy quality i think goes away with with each successive reset whatever it is whether it's a volcanic cataclysm or a um some kind of a, a major electrical phenomenon. There's your, your aorta at the top. Um, or uh, whether it's something, you know, mythical or biblical, like, like you know, the glittering sword of, of God in the Bible or the, um, you know, Medusa of the, of the Greeks. So I'm going to pause it here and see who's outside, and then I'll continue the video. So these two gentlemen that I spoke of have generously offered to not only do the analysis, but to do them for free and to offer me a, a bound copy of the lab results afterwards. And like I said before, he's more interested in, in stones that have fractures. Um, he explained to me that some, some rocks have radiation inside, and so breaking them open can be dangerous, and uh, he prefers to do analyses on, on stones that already have... Uh, undergone some kind of a fracture. So here's a little tiny one that I'll be sending and um, some of these as soon as they're wet on the inside they they show a reddish quality. This one is is quite fleshy so I've decided to throw that one in because it's got a little chunk there on the end and you can see how red that is even without wetting it. Looks a little fleshy bloody inside doesn't it? This is, a, this is an amazing rock here, and you can see this inside 
of the stone is completely different than the outside. <laughs> but you can tell if that break wasn't there, it would look just like all these other ones I've been showing. Here's another one showing the sulcus lines. It's got a little fracture there. But that one's not so fleshy. So this would be a, a second or third reset rock, perhaps. I'm, I'm very curious about this one. This is a, this is a stone I found uh, about a year, year and a half ago. And it's got fractures here. The whole thing is broken. But take a look when, when it's opened up. You can see the remains of the chambers in there. And that, that is the, the iron ore that's in the blood. So that would be an interesting one, perhaps, to do DNA analysis on. Um, and uh, He's got all kinds of different testing techniques beyond just uh, spectroscopy. This one is, is amazing. I, um, I think this is probably, of all the rocks I found, this is probably the one most likely to yield a, a DNA result. And uh, that chunky quality in the center is what's known as trabecula carne. And uh, in the Mud Fossils, the Heart of the Matter Part 1 video, I show exactly what that looks like. I also go in with endoscopic cameras, and I show the, the chambers in, in this rock here. <clears throat> you can see the fleshy quality, the openings of the blood vessels there. That's the coronary artery on the top. You can see the fat that, that normally sits between the, the left atrium and the left ventricle. And then on the back side, the aorta opening. <clears throat> A lot of people have asked me about the other organs. And uh, the thing is, lungs and livers have lobes. So the rocks are likely to cleave upon low, lobe lines and then no longer look exactly like they, they would. I have found uh, many kidneys, kidney-shaped rock, and the, the aorta, or sorry, not the aorta, the, the artery and the vein enter into the side of the kidney at this point. So if you find kidney-shaped rocks, you'll be amazed at how often they have little indentations right there. I'll come back to that one in a second. You can see, so, so, but a kidney isn't such a distinct one. This, however, is, because not only does it have the, the opening to the, the blood vessels, but see those lines there? That is what is known as the, the renal medulla. You can look that up and see what that looks like, or I'll show a picture in the video when I edit it before releasing it. So that is incredibly specific in combination with that. Um, let's see what this one looks like underwater. I can't remember. Yeah, so, so the, those central portions, it's almost, it's like mud in there almost. So it'd be interesting to see. So I'm going to send this chunk and save the other one for myself. And uh, I believe this to be one hemisphere of a brain. I think I've talked about it in other videos. Uh, in my Petrified Titans and Organs Part 1 and 2 videos, especially the Part 2 video, I show examples of other brains that are just undeniably petrified brains, brains of whale, brains of other species. Um, and the interesting thing about this one is it has an indentation right here. Now the back, of the, the back of the brain, if we were looking at it from the side, the back is where the cerebellum, which is known as the little brain, sits. So that would be sitting in that indentation there. But the other thing that's interesting is that the brain has two halves, right? The two hemispheres of the brain. So the other hemisphere would be here. And the space between them is, is rich in blood flow. And so this is interesting. It's called the corpus callosum. And you can see that right in the center of this stone, there's a distribution of iron ore. And that's right where the two halves of the brain would have met. I can't really explain why I don't find more brains. Um, but uh, that, that's a puzzle to solve for another day. I mentioned the, the knife edge when I was talking about this rock. The knife edge is amazing to see. This is... This is the second biggest one I've ever brought home. I just found this the other day. And you can see one side is, is thicker, and then the other side is, has got this, this sharp knife edge. You can see the curved underside. 
and um, and then at the top, oh, just like you'd expect an aorta to to be there, right? And here's a smaller version, same kind of thing, a little thicker on that side. Oh, not so much of a knife edge, but you can definitely see the the aortal opening, and this one is showing sulcus lines as well. Let's see what it looks like wet. I said it was going to be a short video. I guess not so short after all, but. Uh, Let's see the, the quality. I'm not sending this one off, but uh, I just wanted to show it because it's so beautiful. And then this is the biggest of them, showing the pulmonary arteries. This is known as the isthmus, the space between the to two pulmonary artery openings. If you look in there, you can see bumps, which are the remains of the papillary muscles, which are the, the muscles that open the valves of the heart. On the back side, at the top, you've got your aorta right where it should be. And then you can see here, this line is your sulcus line for the intraventricular sulcus. It has a different name on the back side, which I've forgotten, but it's the same thing. It's where the different fibers of the heart meet. So yeah, so these are all, all the broken ones there. And, uh, and this little collection here are all going off with uh, the post today. And I have no idea what the turnaround time is on the lab. I know this gentleman travels a lot as well. So, um, you know, stay tuned and we'll see what what uh, the results are. But uh, it's very exciting and hopefully the the people doing the analysis, um, you know, that they, they don't have agendas that they're serving and that everything is done with integrity and we get uh, some accurate results for um, for these stones. It's exciting to, to finally be moving forward with this. Anyway, I hope you're all well. Take care. Keep your heart soft. They work better that way.